I believe that we are in an age of disruption like none that we've seen previously. You know, you could almost take uh, every uh, single industry, whether it's the automobile industry, the airline industry, the music industry, the book industry, and go down the list and every one of them is going to undergo fundamental change because of mobile and what it means for the way that people are connected. My name is Michael Chasen. I created Social Radar and as the president, CEO, and co-founder of a e-learning company, Blackboard. So, you know, one of the great things about the position I was in at Blackboard was that we got to spend so much time on the campus. In that experience, we saw a, a, a lot of trends, a lot of new trends that were starting to take place on, on college campuses, which the way in which they were utilizing the mobile device and the, the different location services. Uh, they were even willing to not only share all their profile information, but were willing to share their location. And in fact, we're counting on that to be able to connect up with each other. There are five million check-ins on Foursquare every day. Six billion location events happen on Facebook, whether that's check-ins, people uploading photo with location data attached, people attaching the location uh, data to a post. And that's not even counting then the amount of applications that just run in the background and share your location as you're going throughout your day. I started developing some technology that would let you walk into the room and cross-reference the location information for all the people that were near you and their user profile information to show you and tell you about how you were connected to those people around you and how they were relevant to you. We created Social Radar. And the way the Social Radar works is we monitor Facebook, Foursquare, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google Plus for any location events that happen, as well as anyone that's using Social Radar. So for example, I can look down and see, uh, in order of who's closest to me, to ask people to go farther away, the people that are around me. In the corner, you can actually see the icon that indicates where I'm getting their location information from. I can say, oh, hey, here's a friend of mine. I see he's nearby. I didn't expect it to be in the area. I can go ahead and click on him and I can go ahead and then click locate, so he's showing his location, and I can see where he is on a map. If we were, and related to me, if we were in the same room, I could click on radar and literally walk right up to him. And it's very easy to go ahead and search for additional items as well. I'll go ahead and click in the other area. And so here I'm searching for people who are from my hometown of Bethesda or people that uh, speak uh, English or Arabic. Now, when you have this type of uh, a powerful social location system, you need to have a high degree of privacy as well. And we built that into Social Radar. I'm a very public person. If you ran Social Radar, you'd see that Michael Chasen is here. He uh, is a Democrat. He lives in uh, the Washington, D.C. area. I started Blackboard. I went to Georgetown University. But if I wanted to not have all that information be known for everybody using Social Radar, I can go ahead and just flip this to friends only. Or I could go ahead and flip it again and be anonymous, or flip it again and be invisible. I think what we've been coming out of is the age of data. Uh, with the proliferation of technology and uh, information and tracking, we've been collecting huge amounts of data on all these different aspects of our life. But now what we're moving into is how do you take that data and make it useful for the environment that you're in? The idea behind Social Radar is simple. It's about that context. We believe that we're fundamentally disrupting the way people interact and make connections today. Social Radar seems like a great concept in terms of bringing together different types of information funnels and allowing you to kind of filter those together, bring them together, and then show the connection points back. Because as there's more devices and more information networks, you know, whether it's your Facebook or your Twitter, if you can filter out and bring together the relevant data points for what it is somebody's trying to do, whether it's a social revolution or that next big business idea, it makes it so you can accelerate that whole process. You have the caching layer, you know, which is really interfacing with the mobile system, right? So you have your your mobile devices here, right? And then we have our in-memory database, which we built, which is actually housing all of the real-time location information. Now, we're not only developing our technology for the iPhone and Android device, but we're building it for Google Glass as well. Imagine walking into a room and just having your Google Glass and a information appears right in front of you that says, hey, you know five people here in this room, and here's how you know them, and here's where they're located. What we have is the ability to uh, search your social networks, very much like a heads-up display that appears in front of your eye here on a small screen that floats in front of your vision. So for example, you can say, Glass, tell me all my friends in three miles. And it will come back with a uh, set of a list for you of all your friends within a three-mile radius. When we started Blackboard, we very quickly grew it from just the two of us to a, a team of five, and then a team of 12, and then literally bursting at the, the seams. We had a team of 20 people. It was getting so crowded that we had one desk that we had to put up on its side 
Everyone would come in, we'd shut the door, and the desk would go right in front of the door because we were literally so crammed in there, there was no room uh, to even have one more desk unless we were blocking the, the, the front door. So it, now the, the downside of that is you had a very organized lunch time because we'd, we'd put the desk up and everyone would go out and try to come back at the same time. Also very problematic when we had to use the lavatory in the hallway, but, but that's you know, what I remember about starting a company. Welcome on board, Matt. Here's your desk. So all these desks showed up at our office and I had forgotten that these things don't come assembled. I'm like, who's gonna put these together? <laughs> and then uh, I realized the answer was uh, me, uh, plus the interns. We have some of the smartest people in the marketing field working. Kevin Olansky here, who's our chief marketing officer, was one of the uh, top uh, VPs of social at Blackboard, uh, a good friend that I've worked with for a number of years. He came on board Social Radar to run the marketing team. We have Shana here, she's our uh, VP of social marketing. We have Steph, who handles all of the uh, all of our uh, marketing and social content, making sure that we're keeping our users as well as the people who are interested in our technology updated on how things are going, what's happening here at the company, and keeping them actively engaged. As I look around the room, I realize that at least half the room actually said no to me when I originally hired them. Victor interviewed, he, he was recommended by one of our other top developers and said, hey, this is the smartest guy I know. Uh, you've definitely got to have him as part of the team. He came in, he impressed everybody here. I said, Victor, we'd love to have you come work for us. Made him an offer. Then he calls me back. He says, you know, my current job, they increased my salary. They gave me a bunch of people they're going to put under me. So I really, I got to stay. And I said, look, Victor, I'm going to not increase our offer to you at all. We're not going to give you any people under you. Uh, and you should still come work for this startup because this is going to be a life-changing experience. And when you're really factoring where you want to go, you got to, you got to look at the kick me factor. If you stay at your current job and Social Radar becomes the next Facebook, you are going to be kicking yourself. I'm here to stop you from making the biggest mistake of your life. I just said, let me think about it. The next day, he calls me up and says, you're right, I'm coming on board. It's just really cool to be a part of building something like this. I had gotten my undergraduate degree in computer science from American University. Uh, afterwards, I went to Georgetown and got my MBA. And then ended up working at KPMG Pete Marwick in their higher ed technology consulting group. I was actually working with a friend of mine, an old college roommate, Matthew Batinsky. And we were working with schools uh, doing enterprise software installations. But we saw this trend taking place. We saw that schools were spending millions of dollars wiring the dorm rooms and the classrooms to the internet, and yet they weren't spending any money on software to make that useful for teaching and learning. Blackboard is a software that would very easily allow faculty to start putting their course materials online, communicating with their fellow students and teachers online, putting tests and quizzes online, giving them a whole set of tools that they could use to help move part of the educational experience to the web. When we started Blackboard, I mean, we, within the first year, uh, we spent all of our time getting about five or six schools up online. Uh, some of our early schools were Yale Medical School, University of Pittsburgh, Cornell University. But what we found was that if we could just get in the door to school, if we could just get uh, a single professor, a small department, to start using our technology, very quickly it would spread throughout the school. And the interesting thing is when we started Blackboard, it was really before the big dot-com bubble. So we didn't start Blackboard with the idea of raising a lot of money and going public and becoming this large global entity. We really had a passion for technology, a passion for entrepreneurship, and then over the years had really grown to the passion for education. So my partner, Matthew Patinsky, he had gotten his undergraduate degree in teaching, went on, got his master's in education from Columbia, and then went to Harvard. It was technology and education. We just wanted to do something that we thought could make a difference in the world. Over the years, we ended up raising a hundred million of private capital uh, in five rounds of financing. We ended up taking the company public in 2004 and then just continued to grow the company. In November of 2011, we sold the company to Providence Equity Partners for $1.7 billion. What do you think now, looking at the explosion of educational startups? I am now seeing in the education market space a level of disruption that, that we haven't seen in over a decade. The, the first disruption, just utilizing the internet and starting to put courses online, uh, allowed Blackboard to start and, and flourish as a company. But what we're seeing today is another massive disruption. When we created Blackboard back in 1997, we had to spend over a million dollars for our server room. We had to have Microsoft Outlook for our email. We had to have a PBX for our phone systems. 
Today, when someone joins Social Radar, we give them their Social Radar Gmail email account, we give them a Dropbox account, they get a computer, a monitor, they use their cell phone uh, if they need to make calls, and we're up and going. We don't have any server closets, we don't have internal IT. It's so much cheaper and easier to start a company today. The barriers of entry of creating a startup are much lower than they've ever been before. People come to me all the time and they say, Mike, what do you think of this idea? I'm thinking of starting a company. And the experience that I've had is it, it doesn't necessarily matter what the idea is, it's your ability to execute it. If you're interested in starting your own company first, make sure that you are passionate about your idea. Put aside, you know, if it's something that is uh, so wild and crazy people think would never succeed, or even if it's something you think, oh, it's boring, I don't know if it's going to catch on. If you have a passion about what you're doing, if you can see the vision to make it a reality, then you can succeed.